Axis Cavity Preparation Premolars Hello and welcome to another video on Axis Cavity Preparation. A mild pain in the upper left tooth for a few months that did not go away with medication. A faint discoloration on the occlusal aspect of the upper left first premolar. Tenderness on percussion. And delayed response to a cold stimulus. These were the symptoms and signs of a patient I had. The radiograph revealed deep occult caries encroaching the pulp, therefore needing endodontic intervention. Pop quiz As you may recall now, the slob, or Clark's rule, comes in handy while treating multi-rooted teeth. So after injecting local anesthesia, I began axis opening by placing the endo-axis burr number 2 at the centre of the occlusal table between the two cusps along the long axis of the tooth. I then moved the burr in the buccopalatal direction to create an oval axis cavity. This revealed two orifices, one under the buccal cusp and the other under the palatal cusp. I located the larger palatal canal before the buccal canal and then enlarged the orifices with a GG drill. Let's discuss the GG drills briefly. They are commonly available from numbers 1 to 6. Each number represents the size of the drill, with number 1 being the smallest and number 6 being the largest. The rings on the drills represent the number of the GG drill and are specific to each size. Did you know? The maxillary first premolar lies right below the maxillary sinus and is separated from it by a thin layer of spongy and compact bone. Also, the buccal surface of the premolar is close to the buccal cortical plate, which may sometimes result in fenestration or dehiscence. Therefore, a root canal treatment on the premolars could result in perforation into the sinus through the thin bone or may complicate the treatment due to buccal plate proximity. Now let's discuss the ACP of the maxillary second premolar. Subtle differences distinguish the maxillary first and second premolars. The second premolar has a wider pulp chamber buccopalatally and a deeper pulpal floor when two canals are present. The second premolar may also have a single root. When two canals are seen, they are quite distinct and separate along the entire length of the root or might converge to form a single canal near the apex. While the axis cavity preparation is the same as the first premolar, a rare anomaly like the presence of three root canals may be seen. The errors that could occur in ACP of maxillary premolars are perforations can occur due to inadequate evaluation of the direction of the tooth, variations in the placement of the canal orifices, and changes in the shape and number of the canals. If dentinal shoulders are not removed adequately, canals may be missed and instrument separations may occur. Pop quiz. Now let's move on to discuss the axis opening of mandibular premolars. As you know, the first premolar is the transitional tooth and thus the anatomy tends to resemble both the anteriors and posteriors. While the buccal pulp horn is prominent, the lingual horn reduces in height as age progresses. The cross-section is ovoid buccolingually. The mandibular first premolar has a short conical root which is usually straight but can sometimes curve distally. 
In most cases, it has a single canal with an apical foramen. But the canal may bifurcate and exit as two apical foramina. However, if two canals are present, then they may exit as two foramina. Sometimes one of the canals may bifurcate into two and then rejoin to exit as a single foramen. In addition to these variations, a trifurcation may also be present. A single canal in cross-section is mostly ovoid, broad bacolingually and round apically. Before I begin, I keep the pecular placement and anatomy of the mandibular premolar in mind, which gives it the name, the enigma to the endodontist. The lingual tilt of 30 degrees of the mandibular first premolar requires that I hold the burr at the upper third of the lingual incline of the facial cusp, which is centered mesiodistally, and then later direct it along the long axis of the tooth to prevent any perforations. The resulting axis cavity is ovoid. Now let's discuss the last of the premolars, the mandibular second premolar. With a length of 22.3 mm, it is similar to the mandibular first premolar, but with a more prominent lingual horn. While it usually has only one root and one root canal, in some cases it could also present with two or three roots, a bifurcation of the root canal. The axis opening technique is the same as for the first premolar, except that the axis is done at the central fossa to make an avoid opening. Pop quiz Let us revise what we have discussed so far. Maxillary first premolar. Two roots and two canals. The axis cavity is ovoid, running a greater diameter buccolingually. Each canal orifice lies beneath each of the cusps. Maxillary second premolar. Two pulp horns. Single root with a single canal. If two canals are present, they are separate and distinct. Ovoid access cavity. Mandibular first premolar. Buccal pulp horn more prominent than the lingual one. Short conical root with a single canal, which may bifurcate into two apical foramina, or bifurcate and then join to have a single foramen. Access opening is the same as in the maxillary premolars. Ovoid access cavity. Lingual tilt should be kept in mind. Mandibular second premolar. Similar to the first premolar but has the lingual pulp horn a little bit more prominent. Single root and single foramen. Axis cavity is ovoid. Errors commonly seen. Missing the accessory canals and extra roots. This marks the end of the video. Don't miss our next one where we discuss the ACP of the molars. We hope you had fun learning with us. Thank you.